Welcome to the introduction to this eight-part presentation from the Zeitgeist Movement, or TZM for short, entitled From Social Symptom to Root Cause. My name's James Phillips. I'm a member of the UK lecture team, rotating host of the movement's global radio show, and co-global coordinator of our school's project, TZM Education. All of which are an effort to get the movement's materials out to the general public. So what is the Zeitgeist Movement exactly? The movement is a global sustainability advocacy organisation whose principal focus is the recognition that the majority of social problems that plague the human species at this time are not the sole result of some institutional corruption, absolute scarcity, inadequate political policy, a lack of moral fibre, a flaw of human nature or some other commonly held assumption of causality, but rather that issues such as poverty, corruption, pollution, homelessness, war, starvation and alike are symptoms born out of our current, outdated social structure. The defining goal of the movement in addressing these issues is the application of a new socio-economic model based upon technically responsible resource management, allocation and design to meet the needs of every human being on earth. This could be referred to as a natural law resource-based economy, or NLRBE for short. This collaborative approach to social and environmental concern would look to address the root causes of social and environmental problems by arriving at decisions through using the best decision-making method we have ever come to know of and the only one that has been shown to be able to consistently help people from different backgrounds and cultures to reach some form of agreement, but has as yet never been applied to our social system holistically, that being the scientific method. To sum it up in a phrase, it would be the application of the scientific method for social concern. The word zeitgeist itself refers to the cultural, moral and spiritual climate of an age or era, and movement denotes emergence or change. Therefore, we advocate a move away from the current outdated values and practices that perpetuate the current socio-economic system to a more sustainable value set based on our most up-to-date understandings of natural law via the use of the scientific method rather than money, religion, philosophy, business or politics. The first step in initiating this shift has to be an educational one, as the integrity of any system is only as good as the people who support its perpetuation. So why do I think this makes enough sense to warrant putting in all this effort, and why does this message resonate with me so much and compel me to action? Well, because something simply didn't seem to add up for me in the world in which I was growing up, and none of the mentors, leaders, institutions and philosophies said to have the answer to these problems seemed to make much sense to me, let alone making significant headway in solving these issues. I found it difficult then, as I do now, to accept that the majority of humanity have to live in abject poverty at the expense of a few because that is how it has always been and that we will never live in a world without war and poverty because it is simply our human nature to dominate and seek to control one another. Because surely, if this were really the case, then why isn't everyone like that? Is it fair to judge people as naturally greedy when the rules of the game they are surrounded by and forced to play seem to reward greedy behaviour? Just because these are potentially hard problems to solve or problems we have not solved yet does not make them unsolvable, it just makes them unsolved. I also could not understand why I had to do something on the basis of no evidence or logical reasoning simply because a supposed authority figure, who seemed to be in lockstep with this rather odd social status quo, told me I have to. So, I grew up a somewhat disillusioned and bewildered young man to say the least, and even though I was rather rebellious and noisy about all this at times, I had to admit that despite my many frustrations with this state of affairs, I didn't have a better idea. Put up or shut up, as the saying goes. With this sort of disposition, it should come as no surprise that I found myself watching a documentary called Zeitgeist in 2007, which was suggested to me by a fellow socially maladjusted friend. It helped to make a lot of sense about why things were this way, but seemed short on solutions to me. I then went on to watch Zeitgeist Addendum in 2008, and despite an initial eureka moment after the introduction to the Venus Project's vision of how the future could be in the film, 
I attempted to maintain a sober head and spent the next two years trying to find holes in the idea of the NLRBE. On March 16th, 2010 at Z-Day London, upon seeing the vast cross-section of society represented in the room that day and unable to find any logical reason or evidence-based argument against the idea, it became clear that it was time to put up rather than shut up. And I am pretty hard to shut up when I get going. So, since then, I've been going into schools to talk to kids about this idea, hosting radio shows, going out onto the street to talk to the general public, and putting on events to help spread this idea of a new, positive direction in which we could head. So, why am I now doing this presentation series? Well, one of the events I helped put on was Z-Day 2013 in London, in which we featured only exterior organisations, each of whom seek to address a particular social or environmental issue closely aligned with the movement's materials. The reason for this approach was twofold. Firstly, to work with and showcase the great work being done by these organisations in their efforts to shift the cultural zeitgeist in a more positive direction. And secondly, to underscore the importance of a long-term aim to address the underlying causality binding these symptomatic issues together with an entirely new socio-economic model designed to resolve the root cause of these interconnected issues. These points were outlined in my presentation at Z-Day 2013 entitled Joining the Dots, Drawing a Picture of Transition, which you can find in the description for this video and which I would recommend viewing prior to this series. I continued the spirit of unity set forth at Z-Day by setting up a series of monthly events with each organisation represented on that day throughout the following year. For each event I prepared a presentation through the prism of the issue in question to highlight the need to have a long-term goal in mind to address the root cause of their chosen issue as well as the many other vast, varied and interconnected problems we now face. And there is certainly no shortage of well-intentioned social humanitarian activist groups and charities out there attempting to address these issues, that's for sure. However, despite their admirable intentions, they are either unaware of, do not mention or do not appreciate the need to shift to a new model designed to address the reason for the existence of the problems they are trying to solve. Sadly, this is to unwittingly perpetuate these problems rather than solve them and adds up to little more than patchwork in the long run, unfortunately. But if these groups, who clearly care enough to act, could appreciate this point enough to perhaps advocate the NLRBE as a long-term goal, whilst promoting their causes as an important stepping stone in the journey of transition to this objective, then this would be a massive step in the right direction. This is the purpose of this series to highlight the need to move from addressing social symptoms to root cause and working together to do so. Each presentation will include a link to the featured organisation's presentation on Z-Day to help provide some background information and context for each presentation, as well as extensive sources to the presented materials. This series will also be made available in audio format through the movement's global radio show, which can be accessed through our website at www.thezeitgeistmovement.com. There will be repetition of certain information throughout the eight presentations, as there's no need to reinvent the wheel, so to speak, when making a particular point. So hopefully these slides should help to provide revision of some of the key points, while serving to give context and meaning to the point being made at the time. It should be stated that the movement holds no allegiance to, nor agrees with any of the featured organisation's points of view explicitly. Rather, the purpose is to use these perspectives to help illuminate the need to shift our values into alignment with our most up-to-date understandings of the natural world, thus increasing our overall adaptability and hence evolutionary fitness. Because for a long time now, the world's religious leaders, philosophers and writers have been proposing notions of how the world can become a more peaceful, happy and joyful place in which for us all to live. But the ability to technically achieve the abundance required for such a globally collaborative system was never a reality until now. We've achieved so much as a species and to our knowledge are the greatest evolutionary success story this universe has ever created. Quite simply, we are amazing and together there is nothing we can't do. We've changed before, and we can do it again, but not without effort. So I'm afraid the first change has to start with you, 
not someone else. In the final analysis, we are one people and we share one planet.